A little while ago, I got this uh, from a thrift store, and I want to actually see if it works. But the battery, this one here, came with it, was fully discharged. It does not have a charger. So I want to put a bit of a charge on this just to see if the camera works. If the camera works, then I've got a little project for it. So I need to make a charger for this. Well, back in 2022 in January, it's now 2025, January, I bought some of these. Would I buy these again? No. Um, basically, this part here is a lithium-ion charger, battery charger. But it's got no protection. It's going to hope that you've got a lithium-ion battery that does have protection built into it. But it also has this other section here, which I'm not going to be using today, though it will be hooked up, is um, a boost circuit. So if you had a lithium-ion battery here with charge uh, or with protection, then what you could do is have power plugged in here, battery here, be outputting up here at, uh, say, 15 or 20 volts, keeping in mind that uh, this chip here is a B628. And I had another video where one of these things caught fire. Uh, so they're not that good for a uh, high ampage. But if this was a lithium-ion battery with protection, then if the, you lose power here, it could then power the circuit. If you have a lithium-ion battery here without protection, then if you lose power on this side here coming in, uh, the lithium-ion battery could total discharge down to below safe limits or good limits for the battery. Now, the people that built this thing, actually for the charge site, charge side, da, um, actually followed the recommended procedure or schematic uh, with the only difference is that uh, this is supposed to be a 0.4 ohm resistor and they've got a zero there. Uh, for the capacitors, I don't know. I can't uh, measure them. But, hey, they're probably not going to skimp on those. Yeah, right. Um, okay, now, the other thing is that this thing here, this board as is, with the little programming resistor there, which is that one there, is designed to put out one amp of the charge cycle at the maximum charge cycle which is this here so what it'll do is if the battery is flat then uh, it actually detects it and i'll show you a block diagram of this thing in a moment it detects it and does a trickle charge at one tenth of whatever you've got this set for the maximum charge current so if you use a 5K resistor for 5K resistor for the programming um, resistor, it actually outputs 250 milliamps at the maximum, which then is way down here, and then would have a trickle charge of 25 milliamps, and that's the route I'm going. Now I don't have a 5K resistor; I've got a 5.1. Eh, close enough. Now, so that covers this part. So obviously I have to change that, and I've got some here. I came across one data sheet, and only one out there. Most of the data sheets are a couple pages, but this one actually, even though this is the only part I can make real sense of, since the rest is in Chinese, um, they got a block diagram. And it actually shows here that it, uh, they've got an internal source of 2.9 volts. So when the battery is less than uh, 2.9, it uh, actually probably has this thing switched over to the lower end. And then once it hits that, it switches back up to the 
full charge rate. You'll notice though that all this is is op amps, comparator setup in here, uh, voltage dividers. There's no real ON current sources. There's no microprocessor or nothing. So when you turn, stick your battery in, depending on where you are on this curve, is where you start. Now, I did see a mention about um, thermal, and I kind of think what they it meant was, and I could be completely wrong, is that there's a soft startup on this. Um, there's some part in there that takes time to warm up. Because you're normally going to be starting over here. You're not going to be starting with a totally flat battery. Uh, so there's probably some thermal part that uh, slowly switches up to um, constant current. Or the higher constant current. So that's those two sheets. So the first step is going to be... Uh, to pull that little resistor out of there. So there's the original uh, 1200 uh, ohm uh, resistor and here's the one I'm going to use to replace it. I'm probably going to have to just do this off camera. But I shall try. Oops, a bit of solder. Do a lot of solder and just pop the chip off. There we go. And now let's try putting the other one straight back on. Oops. Man, are these things tiny. There we go. That might have worked. Okay, and what I'm going to do is see if it actually worked. Put my meter in here. Five point one four. Let's go from this point here to that there. Good. Resistor actually worked and earth works. So after a bit of cleaning with some isopropanol, uh, looks not too bad. I think I was using a 0805 and I suspect that was um, a 0603 uh, resistor, but it fits. And now attach my fancy dancy uh, charge board. Probably be taking this back off of it eventually. But I do have 10 of these uh, boards. When shipping would cost uh, more than the product, you might as well buy 10 of them. So, that's good.
So now it's just gonna be a waiting game. I'll periodically check the temperature on this. With my previous setup, I wouldn't know if it was actually charging or not, or at what uh, current. So, I've set up a multimeter between it in current mode. I've got the battery here. I did take a reading on the battery and it's reading over 2.9 volts after that brief time uh, hooked up. So, let's see if I can get this. There, there we go. There. Ah! It's all set up. Uh, 228 milliamps. So this has been going for a few minutes. Uh, the battery voltage has climbed uh, slowly, or is still climbing slowly. Uh, the current is still about the same. I have periodically uh, checked the battery temperature. And instead of using my skin, I'm using this. And it doesn't indicate that it's heating up any. It'll be interesting to see if it actually is getting much of a usable charge. Or if it's one of those ones where, oh, I'm fully charged. And as soon as you do any drawdown on it, uh, you get nothing. So if you've noticed these uh, nice uh, banana plug to uh, alligator clips... I got those in uh, whatever mail bags in the corner there. Uh, they're coming in quite handy and I do like the quality of them. Plug, obviously, for previous mail bag. <coughs> I'll shut up now. So I've uh, run it for a while. It's time to see if, uh, if the battery got enough charge to uh, light up the camera. So here's the camera. power button. Oh, I got a green light. And no memory card. Correct. So the battery did uh, take some charge. Yeah, not bad for 50 cents. Oh, okay. Let's see. I'm going to have to go find a memory card for this thing. I couldn't find a memory de uh, edit. I couldn't find a memory card um, adapter for it. I know I've got some around here somewhere. But, it looks like the battery does hold a charge. I didn't put much on there. And the camera does work. So, this thing's going to be used in the future. I'll probably uh, try to figure out some way to hook up a better uh, <laughs> battery. Because I'm not betting on this one uh, being the greatest. So, in summary, it worked. It charged the battery. Uh, the camera works. Uh, would I do this, uh, recommend doing this? Uh, only if you're desperate. Uh, would I walk away from this while it is uh, charging? 
not a hope. I would have a hard time explaining to the insurance company if the place burned down that uh, I didn't know better. So, yeah, it does work. This uh, thing, though, really needs to be used with a battery that has uh, protection. Oh, uh, just one little thing. The T is for the NTC. I checked this one and it's got about a hundred K um, NTC so that's kind of cute so that's it for this one it does work camera works charger works uh, you might not want to do this at home have a good day bye